Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to have a look at how to create an invoice in our service database. So this is part three of this service database series. So what I've done from part two, in the service table, just right click and get into design on that. I've just added an extra field invoice number and it's a number field, that's all I've done. And if I just put this into view for a second, got four records, invoice one, invoice two, invoice one, invoice three. So this person's had two, two jobs done on this under the same invoice. Close that one down. And then on the form, if I just open the form, you can see the, the invoice number is there as part of the sub form. So that's all I've done in terms of fields. And then what I did was I created a query. So let's close this one down. So I'll recreate all these in a minute. So I'll just create a query and added a parameter query for the invoice number there, which I'll go through in a second. And then I based a report on that query. I right click on that and go into design. And that's the report with some grouping. So it's grouping on um, customer ID and invoice ID or invoice number. And this is a, a report that's looking at a parameter query. So if I run this report, it will ask me for the invoice number. I type the invoice number in, press enter, and it creates the invoice. So this is customer one, invoice one, and it had two jobs done. And if I close that down and run it again, customer invoice number two, just happens to be customer two as well. And there's the invoice for that customer. Now this layout is just rough and ready. You'd have to put your logos and stuff like that on the top of that and maybe change this layout altogether. Later on, I'll show you how to do concatenation so you can get rid of all these boxes and make it look quite nice and tidy. But for now, we have to build this up. So I'm building it up quite slowly. A little summary field there. If I go into design on this, you can see that there's a formula there which is adding up the amount to pays if there's more than one if there's not more than one, it just gives you the same figure. So let's recreate the query first of all. So I'll just create query design. And I just basically added the customer table and the service table. And this little asterisk, if you double click on that, it basically brings down all the fields. So I'm going to do that for both tables. It's a tidy way to bring things down. And then the the other field that I want to bring down, and I want to use the where feature, I'm not showing the tick, is the invoice number. So if I just double click that down, I don't want that to display, otherwise there'll be two invoice numbers. I'm not actually using this query to run as a query, it's just going to be a base for a report. So the parameter element is triggered by a square bracket. So a square bracket, enter invoice number. This is just a prompt for people enter invoice number and if I just run that to test it, it should ask me invoice number one should be two records there is so I'll go back into design happy with that save the query so I'll save this query as um, QRY test and I'll get rid of this later on so that's the query now the report needs to be based on that query so create report design and you need to attach that to that query so record source on the data tab is test and then fields there's all the fields so I need to do some grouping here so I've already clicked on this from before but you need to activate that group and sort and then down the bottom, you've got add group. So the first one is going to be um, customer ID. And then group going to be invoice number. And you can do this any way, any which way you want. Invoice number. So in customer header, I want the customer ID all the way down to, to that. Just bring those into there. I don't want them sitting like that, so I'm going to arrange them as tabular. Now, sometimes that doesn't 
work, but let's just see how this looks. So if I bring this part up to there, have a quick look at that. It's asking me for the parameter number. So, okay, that works. Go back into design and get rid of some of these spaces if I can. Now, the invoice itself, I want to bring this in slightly differently. So I want the invoice number to sit up there like that. Just bring that in a little bit. This is where concatenation would, would come in and I'll show you in a, a later video. But there's going to be the invoice number and then the rest of this can come in. So this is a service. I don't need the ID. So service date. Don't need the label. If you need the label, you could just put the label in, but just going to bang these next to each other. Now service date, service type, don't need the label. Let's push that into there. Um, custom ID I've already got. Car type, I do need that. Get rid of the label. Push that across. Now if you want, you can go, you can use the wizard. I, I did use the wizard, um, but the wizard concatenates, not concatenates, um, truncates quite a lot of these fields and you spend half your half your time trying to um, widen columns and things like that so Batimo and amount to pay don't need the label so let's have a look and see what that looks like invoice number again so that's okay invoice number Go back. All right, so let's just test something out actually. So going back to service, invoice number, get rid of that. So I should have had two records for that, so I'm doing something wrong there. Invoice number header, and let's get a totals for this. So with a footer section, yep. So details, so let's put all this in the details bit and just the invoice number at the top there, like so, and then get rid of uh, all this space and then just push this back up to have a look there we go we've got the two now so that was because I put everything in the, the top bit and now we'll carry on so that works now what we need to do in the footer area is to do a formula that's going to add up these two amounts so that is a a B box from the control area and the design tab and then you want to just put a box there and it's a quick, simple sum, sum, open bracket as you would in Excel. You have to refer to the field you want to add up, which is this amount to pay. That's to go into square brackets, amount to two T's, amount to pay, square bracket close. Amount to pay, you can't type. Mount to pay, that's it, close the bracket, click away, have a look, invoice number one should be 900, is 900, needs formatting to currencies, go back into design, click on it, up to your property sheet, format, drop it down, currency, change the label, get rid of that actually, change the label to invoice total or something, invoice total so that looks okay have a look invoice 900 pounds and then you move these around and line them all up so all the boxes are something you'd have to get rid of don't like the look of those and you might want to put labels back on some of these because that doesn't really make sense to 20,000 miles that is a service you've had done but you might not even want that field in there it's a BMW car type so it's totally up to you what fields and what labels you use and how you how you lay that out but
basically that is an invoice based on a parameter query. So then the last thing we do would be save this, yes, as RPT um, test, I'll call it test because that's all I'm doing here. And then click OK. Now, if I just show you what the wizard would, would have created. So if I go into the um, query service details, create um, report wizard. So if I take all the fields across and then just come back with the fields I don't really want. So I don't need customer ID in twice, so I can take that off. And anything like um, parts, I don't need the part quantities, stuff like that. Because all these things are just going to clutter up the actual report itself. So you just have to go through this. I think that'll, that'll be okay. You've got some options there service first or customer first next i don't want to do i want to group it by it's grouping by customer at the moment that looks okay when you go next you get the summary options now on any number field or currency field it'll give you the summary options so um price of service yeah amount to pay yeah that's it i think and uh, I can have that as a percentage of total. Normally I would, but not on a service invoice. So I'll just click OK to that. Next, set this to landscape to give you a bit of scope. It does say adjust the fields so all fields fit on a page. That never, ever works. And let's have a look. And then you name it. I'll just leave it like that. Finish. Invoice number one. And as you can see, as I said, everything gets truncated. So then you have to go into design. The layout's pretty similar, to be honest. You, um, it's got everything up here, though. It's not got an extra grouping. I did the grouping by service. But if I go into design on this, I'll just close that. What you'd have to do with this is start opening up these boxes. I'll just do it on that one to see if it does anything. Gets rid of the uh, hashes. Yeah, it's got rid of the hashes on that one. Um, I find it very difficult to to get this to look right. You spend more time doing this manually, trying to fix this, than you would if you just created the thing yourself. But it's, it's totally up to you. Just close. I don't want to save that. Now, what we're going to do in the next session is we're going to look at, like I've already said, using concatenation to tidy up that invoice report. And then we'll look at some other features that we can put into these tables that may enhance this, some reporting for ourselves, how much have we made over a period of time, for example, how much has a custom, each customer spent, who's our best customer and things like that. But for now, that's all I want to talk about. So that's the end of this session. Thank you for your time.